My name is Lea Mirheim. So today we are going to talk about uh, fintech for the Global Fintech Hackathon Accelerator. It's Global Accelerator Fintech Singapore, actually. And um, I would like to expose the problem number 24 amongst, I think it was like 50 problems. So the problem number 24 is how may we reduce the cost of sourcing for the SME suppliers and adopt more sustainable practices. So in this talk today, I would like to expose just um, the solution to this question. So the challenge, first of all, is that um, every business's small and medium enterprise need third party suppliers. And how do we reduce the cost of uh, the suppliers? How aren't we bound to a certain context? Um, aren't we bound to a certain uh, environment issue? What does sustainability really mean? And how does the supplier is choosing and uh, his price? And this is affecting then the small or medium enterprise. Um, that's basically what I wanted to know and what I wanted to expose today. And uh, the challenge is to come up with a solution that reduce the cost of the SME in the end of the day and the price of the operation themselves. Um, <clears throat> so the solution, of course, is going to present and, and introduce uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. However, um, I chose to uh, compete through innovation and invention by completely creating an entire application dedicated to uh, reducing the cost of the suppliers uh, in the process, as well as um, creating a sort of shared global uh, economy between suppliers and a small and medium enterprise that would reduce uh, some steps in between as well. Um, and um, for that, we will expose it in two parts. So the first part will be very short. Um, it will be dedicated to the landscape and how we see and what we foresee in um, the, the suppliers and SME relationships and what is the, the usual market landscape. And what do we hear about sustainability? What really sustainability really means? Then we are gonna move on to the second part, which is the solution through innovation and, and, um, and invention. Uh, we have an automated solution ecosystem that provide an SMU specific context. Uh, for that, we will be designing as well data and uh, we will design around failure and building trust with Essential. Um, so basically, this is what this is a little short introduction and we are going to move on then into what is the formulas of sustainability in order to understand what is the context, how can we and how may we uh, create an environment and a specific environment for the SMEs and suppliers to thrive in and reduce their cost and by the, and by that achieve a lower price for the SMEs and by that then have better profit margin that will help the SMEs increase their business um, and scale up their business as well throughout time and, and throughout build up relationship basically. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I would like to introduce you today. And for that, we are going to move on then to the fourth uh, environmental um, pillar of sustainability engagement. So what is sustainability engagement? You have four pillar, which is internal to social sustainability, which is external social sustainability, which is internal environmental sustainability, and which is external environmental sustainability. So four pillars. So we are gonna start with internal social sustainability, which is uh, the better workplace that company all wants to create, but they are limited by many laws inside it. Then we have external social sustainability, which is a few companies are working on a global level, a few companies are working on a global level, and where do we find an in-between for the footprint of each company? And then we are gonna move on to so we are going to move on to internal environmental sustainabilities, which is the company that are working to decrease their own environmental footprint. So we are touching 
in terms of uh, environmental sustainability. Then we are touching in terms of uh, external environmental sustainability, which is a number of companies working towards to make sure that their supply chains are greener and how do you keep an effective price with that and how do you keep a reduced cost with that? Because that comes also as was in the question is how do we keep a very good price that is still sustainable in terms of sustainability for the environment, sustainability for the company, sustainability for the SME, and sustainability for the relationship with the suppliers. So sustainability can be understood in many different ways, as we see. Um, what do we hear about that? So how do you keep a company being sustainable? And how do you keep your team and businesses being sustainable and green? Greener from the environment, greener for your team, greener for your um, products and greener for your people. And without sustainability, you won't have any longevity. So that's why the question of sustainability is crucial here. So no matter what the cost and reducing the cost is the epicenter of the problem, however, being sustainable is going to ensure the longevity of a business. So whether you design for internal or external problem, uh, you will always encounter and face the problem of longevity. Uh, especially if you are creating something from the ground up, it has to last, it has to uh, thrive through the time and, and um, kind of like go through the, the backbone of time uh, in order to um, be a value, a certain, of, a certain of value of business. And you also have to prove that through time that your business is actually creating added value and continue to stay relevant. Um, how do you keep a sustainability within your team? How do you keep a sustainable relationship within uh, your suppliers? So in a 26 page paper that I'm not going to go through in this short video of introduction, um, I expose basically the landscape, I expose basically the globality uh, and the global question that this set because there is a common global, um, so there is a, a global um, context to suppliers and, and small business relationship. There is also a global effect uh, into any suppliers. Even though you seem and you think that you are a small business, you're gonna have a global effect within um, everything that you possibly enterprise within your small, medium enterprise. You, are, you have a collective approach as well, which is very important uh, because the supplier might not be your only supplier and might supply someone else. So there is an entire ecosystem and collective approach to that. And we can see this very clearly and fondly in many case scenarios. I think that Alibaba shows this very, very, very well. And you might stumble upon something that is a brand today that was not a brand yesterday. Does that count as a supplier relationship and as a new business and small and medium enterprise? Absolutely. So is also it's also what do you consider in the ecosystem being created as a legitimate established business versus uh, what is a hustle or hustle? Um, I think that from the moment that you are creating a profit from it, you are established as an SME, small and medium enterprise. How do you lower the cost for that question? We have seen that there are four pillars that are needed to be um, needed to be concerned, whether it's internal or whether it's external, and that there is a collective approach to sustainability and lowering the cost. And that is clearly the answer that I would like to give. And that will move to the second point and the second part of this talk, which is uh, creation through innovation and invention uh, of a solution. That's basically what we chose to do for to solve this problem. And uh, basically, we so before to move to the second talk, I would like to just expose uh, a small, in, in, a, in a short way, 
uh, what the solution would be, which is a research and analysis of an ecosystem in a sustainability practice of SME in the landscape where indispensable, obviously. So this is a result of 26 pages of research. And then we started implementing a solution around and inside the, the operation already invented by the human nature that goes through any type of suppliers versus team and small SMEs uh, relationship, which is a build on relationship as well with time uh, and then uh, contract. And then the product of FinTech loan payment and can use machine learning, aka artificial intelligence, or blockchains with smart contract that would facilitate and ease any type of, of transaction. Because once with a blockchain, once you have stored a smart contract in it, uh, it can stay forever. So it doesn't matter if you are in a country, let's say, and you have a coup d'etat, uh, the document is forever stored and no one can destroy it or get get lost or lo lose it. Or if a law change, you still have this as a valid proof that you were allowed at one point to do what you are doing right now. Um, whatever it is, if it's, for example, let's say you are selling vitamins, the law change over time for biotech or tech or anything bio in uh, the industry. So through blockchain and artificial intelligence, we found that we can completely lower the cost. And this is not something new, it's actually something extremely known. In order to for the supplier to go inside of an application, your product, your product has to match with certain criteria. So, uh, and you can develop what is then a collective sustainability footprint. Uh, so basically, if your products match with a certain criteria, whether it's internal and external, we can then start designing a context uh, with data and through data. So data is first of all, first of all and main of all being designed. And there are tons of data and only 2% in this world is being used. The reason why is because most of the designer don't pay attention uh, to don't pay enough attention to designing what data is. So if you take basically external uh, external context and uh, internal context and you ask the person using the application to get inside and start putting and entering data, you can then know and have data and design around this data a certain specific context, which is n unlike um, <clears throat> which is unlike a search bar where the, you might be confused or where uh, the set of choice can be so broad that you don't really know where to go or what are smart contracts or what are contracts or where my team is involved in this. Why do I even need a team? Um, all of those questions can be answered very simply inside of uh, a one-on-one -on -one type of plan that a supplier can have and then uh, instillate a form of trust in them um, in, in between the relationship in the form of trust because basically if you start if you start designing with data through data then you talk to a supplier uh, that will make a clear and concise plan for you in a specific context for you then you are going to eliminate a lot of mistake by eliminating a lot of mistake you are going to eliminate ev evidently a lot of costs to you because the mistake um you can fall short but fall fail short and fail fast uh, a lot of mistakes are too costly a lot of mistakes are avoidable and a lot of mistakes are avoidable with what by by and via the expertise. So if you already have a relationship set with a specific uh, supplier that will give you a concise plan, you will... So by knowing your data, you will be able to avoid costly mistake. Then how do you reduce the cost? Is by getting rid of as many middlemen as possible between the transaction process of uh, the, the product of the services, of the product for the services being made, both. Um, and 
um, the actual results. So one supplier with uh, in contact with directly with one factory, um, one context explaining to you from the beginning of the end and from the beginning to the end how it works will completely reduce the cost of it. Then how do you get inside of this operation? Um, you also have to see the evolution of what an operation is, and this is exposed in the 26-page document, and how there is a collective approach to this process, uh, as um, it's, it's might sound, um, it might sound completely, <clears throat> completely not true, but it is true. There is an entire collective approach to this. Um, because your supplier might not be the supplier of one person or the factory might not do just one single uh, process or processes of your product. So um, that being said, there is also competitive analysis that you have to do and as a small and medium and no, uh, as a small and medium enterprise and know who your competitors really are in your market. Uh, so the more you do your homework, <laughs> so to speak, uh, the more costly mistakes you are going to avoid and know what you need to cater to your customer specifically. So uh, that being said, for innovation and invention, we can deliver as well an experience that could disrupt the supply chain of operation in the ecosystem and um, design with innovation. So my product resemble a lot to Alibaba but I would like to sell it actually to Alibaba which would be actually my main competitor however um, among many uh, however I think that the differentiation is that there is a specific contact and that specific context and that data is actually being designed and catered specifically to the, to the client or to the SMEs. So we created an entire ecosystem through sustainable sourcing, which is the name of the application, where you do your onboarding and when you are asked to do business inquiries. And for the business inquiries, it's all about, this. it's all designed between internal and external. Um, internal and external design are here, um, the main, the two main pillar of the innovation. Uh, because you are going to cater a specific context and you are going to gather data that will be useful not only for you, of, of course, but as well for like extremely useful for the user, the individual, as um, anyone call it so differently these days, the people, the person. Uh, so the more data you are going to ask from the individual, let's call it let's call the user the individual, the more data you are going to ask uh, from the individual, whether it's internal or whether it's external, between smart contract, finance, then you are going to ask for a sourcing context. Um, is it uh, healthcare? Is it about, you are going to ask about their industry. You are going to ask about um, their products exactly how they want and then you are going to match with a machine learning application process a specific supplier to them. The supplier is going to craft a smart contract with a specific context and you are free as a, an individual to accept it or to let it go. Uh, basically, if you accept it, then you are redirected directly to the selection of supply that we already have made for you within your range of price, within your range of uh, context, within your range of industry, and within your range of uh, sourcing. So it's completely sustainable and we already have designed for you internal and external factors that help shape a specific uh, personalized, so to speak, context that will bring you the most valuable uh, products and those products have also an AI algorithm. So those products will have also as well an AI algorithm that will bring you suggestions that are very close to the context that you have. Why? Because what changed in here, and I believe that the innovation really lies on, is that it's designed and mainly made for the context. 
um, meaning the actual um, the actual user or individual will find himself within a specific context with specific products to sell with product that he might not have thought of but might buy a little bit and then try um, because you don't know yet what exactly your range of client and how do you really know completely your customer uh, some people spend 20 years with the same business uh, even a small and pop shop and still don't know their customers and that's very true because you district can be gentrified um, because your context might evolve because the landscape might change because of so many factors you can never la rest on your laurel and say i know it all um through experience um that's going to be completely impossible then in sustainable sourcing we offer an entire ecosystem as well for you to thrive so you have a sourcing you have a product you can incorporate your team with it. You have contact your vendor or your supplier. Uh, you have your data. So your data is constantly being accessible. You can change it. You can ask to change it. Um, if you are in healthcare, but you decide to open a second business, let's say in car wash, you can change your entire data from internal and external design. You have your cost and then if you do not have enough money, we offer a small into 3,000 euros, US dollars, um, in order for you to be able to thrive in this ecosystem. So this is uh, thanks to FinTech. This is thanks to, um, as well, uh, Cashless Society. And then you just have to pay everything through a QR code. So once you enter your card, you will be asked to enter your card once only. And then you pay any time your products or the services of your products of, or the products from your services through a QR code that is going to be assigned to you through uh, sustainable sourcing. Then you can revisit and ask constantly to see a different vendor. You can ask to see a different supplier. But main of all, your supplier is really uh, with you from the very beginning to the end. Instead of having many contacts and many guys, you have one straight plan and you can start building up a relationship that will last full time with any of your supplier. Because the only way to really create a sustainable uh, lowering cost is also by building trust and actual relationship with your supplier. So the more trust you have within your supplier, the better of a work environment you are going to create in your SMEs, the better um, are going to be <clears throat> um, your relationship, the better you are going to access new novelties as well. Uh, it's by building trust and by building those relationships that you will be able to access all of this. And these are human skills that will be indispensable. And that's why we decided to incorporate, besides the machine learning aspect and besides the blockchain aspect, we decided to incorporate uh, humans to human B2B really directly relationship. Uh, not only to make five suppliers and uh, suppliers and um excuse me suppliers and uh SMEs but as well to build a trust and to build a relationship that will be beneficial for both ends in the end of the day. So you will be accessed if you know how to build and cultivate a real true relationship which we give you the environment for in sustainable sourcing, you will be able to access novelties, you will be able to access price, you will be able to access, per, uh, you will be able to access discounts uh, in function of the period of a year. Your price might vary in January than in December, for example. Uh, anything can be different at those different stage. So that's basically what we are proposing here and we are proposing to compete for innovation and invention. So by competing for innovation and invention, which is what we are completely proposing to do in sustainable sourcing, we are incorporating the last point that I would like to make is we are incorporating of a human aspect to it. So besides having your data and access your data, uh, that is completely shared because it is a shared collective economy. Um, so your data will be shared 
uh, and will be accessible by you at any time, um, as well as the data that the supplier is going to give you in a specific plan for you gathered that will be stored thanks to the, thanks to the blockchain uh, of, um, of the company and that will be of sustainable sourcing and that will be able to install and, and really solidify this sense of trust. Um, we will have, we have a very important human aspect so you can onboard your team so know that you are not going to be the only agent alone in charge and that is also a very good human factor not only for the supplier and but that's going to lower your cost in 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 your human labor uh because if you have to fail and the mistake is the mistakes is only on you uh, fail short, fail fast, but uh, you are going to receive the entire consequences. So if you onboard an entire team, uh, you will also have a human uh, cost efficiency that will be reduced by probably two or three um, because your team has access to it all the time. Uh, a second, sometimes four eyes are better than two uh, or six eyes are, will be better than two. Uh, you can see if your product uh, will do. You can have access to the novelties. So maybe you won't have the time for the novelty this time, but one of your colleagues might and might be hoping on um, sustainable sourcing, seeing, uh, seeing the novelty and ordering it, or talk to you about it and say, hey, what do you think about it? Let's order some and then uh, make fry of your business. So more than a cost reduction, I would say it's a much more it's a much more driven ecosystem that will reduce your cost for sure, and and will reduce your cost as a consent as a consequence. Um, so what I did in order to re to reduce the cost of the supplier, so in the end of the day, the SME is that I did reverse engineering. Not only the cost will be reduced, but you have an ecosystem that thrives in order for you to reduce the cost. This ecosystem will be cre it will create a sustainable environment, will create, will tell you if you have a greener or not green footprint, for example, uh, via, extern via internal and external design. So uh, by being more specific, um, just only, and creating a very specific design app that design data, and that puts you into a specific context that is catered for you and personalized for the individual, aka user, uh, you will have and be able to have um, cost reduction, you will be able to have more sustainable, more sustainability, more sustainability for you and your team. And uh, you have as well a payment processes that will be for your team. So for example, your team is on board, you don't have enough money and you say like, oh, there is this novelty, we don't have enough money, what do you think about that? Can we take a loan? And then on that point on, uh, the blockchain will install trust as well because the blockchain will be from... Uh, the P2P, so peer to peers loans, uh, and then uh, we'll store the information and you won't have any problem of uh, fear or scam or anything because the blockchain is here to be anti-fraudulent uh, anti uh, and malversation transaction. And that is a huge, uh, a huge, front line for trust that is non-negotiable so the p2p is peer to peers a loan system that you can incorporate your team in and that you can decide in teams inside of the ecosystem of sustainable sourcing to yes or no take a loan without fraudulent uh or fear or fraudulent uh initiation and that is a big uh, amazing thing for for your business that you can scale up and that will reduce your cost in the end of the day. So thank you very much for listening to me and I hope you have a great day.